Hello everyone and welcome to my second ever attempt to use Principia in Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul. This attempt was also done during a live stream, as my first one was, but this time I decided to set aside the James Webb Space Telescope for now, though I have some hints about how to get it to the right location, but I'll have to try that out, and instead decided to try out rendezvous, docking, and also transfers to the moon in this case. So we're going to launch a docking target. This is basically a Unity module plus the power and propulsion element from Lunar Gateway. And we're gonna launch it to low Earth orbit using an Ariane 5 by, well, actually initially I tried using an Ariane 5 by request of my audience, but the Ariane 5 didn't quite work out as it turns out because the load is about 23 tons and it's really pushing it and my trajectory wasn't very good. But what really ultimately killed it was the fact that the upper stage has one ignition and I forgot to unlock the fuel because I had locked the upper stage fuel tank in order to underfuel it and since I used the one ignition with the tank locked it had no ignitions left. But anyway, taking a look at the Delta V's we wouldn't have made orbit anyway. That was actually the second attempt with the Ariane 5. So I switched to Vulcan Centaur with six boosters because I really didn't want to try again after this and even with six boosters because the trajectory is sort of painful with the upper stage as it is the long duration upper stage uh i barely made it basically so a lot of practice needs to be done with these uh long upper stages for me apparently but yep off go the fairings there's the payload and we're gonna end up putting it into a fairly high orbit unintentionally. I was aiming for about 400 kilometers. I was going for ISS style orbit, uh, but we have a apoapsis above 500 kilometers, so I kept, kept the periapsis relatively low uh, to even things out. So there we've made orbit, uh, and I used the power and propulsion element to boost it to a higher orbit after deorbiting the centaur stage here. We want to keep space clean because otherwise Principia is going to be calculating stuff in the background and we really don't want Principia to calculate stuff in the background. Uh, it does have the ion engines to power and propulsion element but those do hardly anything. Uh, so RCS was used to lift its periapsis a bit and I also checked its orbit which wobbled a lot. There was a lot of perturbation in its orbit. So very interesting. Will that cause problems for rendezvous? Well, I decided to use the Taurus space plane on the Vulcan Centaur to find out. I added little fins to Vulcan Centaur even though previously I had tested the Taurus space plane on it and managed to get it to orbit, but it it's really hard to control because of all the aerodynamics going on with the space plane. So I decided to add little fins to the bottom to stabilize it so it'll be easier. So yes, we have Gem and Bill and boosters will separate momentarily. The Taurus space plane has more than adequate amounts of Delta V in order to rendezvous, but there is also the re-entry question. I decided to test re-entry in Principia as well, so we will be doing that. There is the end of the first stage, and now the second stage, which I did underfuel as well. But this time, these engines have multiple ignitions, just in case. And we uh, cut short because I wanted it to just deorbit, and we'll use the Taurus space plane to finish up orbit. That is not all of its delta V, we have some of it locked there. We only half fueled the Taurus space plane for this purpose. And uh, so we completed orbit, and then we rendezvoused. Now, in target mode, you get this sort of thing with the target fixed view. Basically each loop is in orbit. You can tell by the ascending and descending nodes. Uh, so it's a little bit awkward. I didn't find it very useful. I just did what I normally do to rendezvous and it worked out fine. And Mechjeb seemed to have a decent grasp on the closest approach distance in this case. I don't know whether that will be true for more complex situations outside of low Earth orbit, but for now it seemed to do fine. And it didn't cost me anything. But you can see what happens to that uh, view, the target fixed view, as we do this correction burn. It sort of extends out, which makes it seem like we're getting further away. That was a little bit confusing to me, because of course I expect that as we close the gap with our orbit to the target's orbit, that it would get 
closer and closer on each orbit, so we'll have less deviation. And ultimately, it does sort of crunch together, but I sort of haven't got a good sense of why it was extending out initially. So anyway, ultimately, we get this sort of loopy sort of deal, but again, I just did what I normally do to approach and dock, and everything seemed to work out fine. Uh, again, the closest approach distance on MechJeb didn't seem to do anything unexpected. It was a little bit different. One thing that was unexpected is I forgot that there wouldn't be any pause at the physics range boundary, the 2.25 kilometers, so I overshot when I was time warping. I'm used to there being a pause right there, and there wasn't. So yeah, that was the only sort of surprising thing. And so here we are docking. Uh, not too much of a fuss. And this is important because we're going to be docking something much heavier to this next. Because it's my intention to transfer this module, that station module, to the moon. But first, we deorbited the Taurus space plane. I just let my KOS script for the shuttle handle it. Now, the Taurus space plane is not exactly the shuttle. It has a lot more drag. Uh, but actually, we were initially overshooting, so it decided to do S-turns. But one problem was that we... I actually inputted the wrong landing location. It was set for Edwards instead of the Cape. And so we weren't lined up with the Cape at all. So it's not gonna be able to land properly. And so it's not a really great test. You can see a lot of overheating on the AJ-10 190s. We lost one, not the other though. And obviously that's very suspicious because they should be very well shielded from the airflow and their location. Uh, ultimately we lost RCS. It, was having trouble holding the nose up so it used way too much RCS fuel and depleted it and so once it depleted the RCS it no longer was able to hold orientation uh, so I'll probably have to rebalance it. Somebody said that, I think Pekka said that uh, the aerodynamics has sort of changed with Principia. I don't know why that would be but uh, based on the fact that the Taurus space plane was set in the right sort of situation for realism overhaul. Otherwise, it seemed to have a different effect here in Principia. Anyway, I gained control over it, uh, pointing straight at the ground and gaining speed to avoid a stall, and then we splashed down. So, it became a boat. But anyway, so that's how that worked out, and Jim and Bill were fine, as it turns out, and I proceeded to launch, basically I wanted to launch the exploration upper stage, the EUS, to our little station up there so that we could boost it to the moon. But it would be sort of a waste to not send anything else because at 23 tons it's way under the capacity of SLS to the moon. So I decided to add a quest airlock and also I have a small stage with an AJ-10-190 in order to capture around the moon. So that's what we're sending up. But mainly it is a very light payload for SLS right now, it's just that we want to make sure that most of the EUS's fuel is available for the transfer. And of course it's going to be a pain to dock with it. It is a bulky stage. Now initially I didn't have any view on the orbit of my target. Selecting it as a target doesn't work the same way in Principia as it does regularly, so that was different. You have to use this thing and there's a select target vessel thing there. And so then I selected it and then we could see its orbits. So otherwise you can't see its orbits. Now of course that's way too many orbits. I just want one orbit. It's complicated. Uh, so here I was trying for a direct intercept. That's why I add the target view up and I'm looking through them. But we're pretty close to it. I launched at the at close to the best time for it but not quite. Of course, because of its inclination, that's easy. And you can see the closest approach distance that MechJib has there. We weren't quite able to get a direct encounter with it. That was a little bit of a stretch, but anyway, we got pretty darn close, so it was fairly easy to do the rest. That said, um, though easy to do the rest, I ended up using quite a few ignitions of the RL-10s because uh, well, I was getting a little bit tired at this point and a little bit lazy, I guess. So, yeah. That was how the orbits looked like right there. And the RL-10s I double-checked had 10 ignitions each, so I did a supplementary burn here, because you can see it brings the closest approach distance at the top of the screen there, down to less than 20 km. Well, a little bit of an RCS correction will be necessary. Here are those loop loops again. And you can see where the loop is going to get close to the station. 
and of course that's where we're going to cut our speed. Really, we only need one loop. Uh, that's one orbit. But if you want more loops, of course we're gonna be drifting away from the station. That's a given because we're not in the same orbit as it. And so here is the correction burn. And the upper stage, the EUS was rather hard to handle. I put some RCS ports, but uh, they actually ran out of fuel at a certain point because they're fairly big ports. And I didn't put enough fuel on the EUS stage itself, so we had to use some of the fuel from the lunar orbit capture stage in order to run the RCS. Anyway, there we are approaching everything. Again, I just did everything the way I normally do. So this part seemed relatively straightforward, despite the weird loops on the map view and the pink version of the nav ball. But, yep. Yeah. Alright, so then we have to transfer to the moon. Of course, we can't target the moon for some reason. And it wouldn't show an encounter like normal. It never shows an encounter like normal with Principia, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. But, yeah. So, no way to target that as such. Uh, we can, of course, change to the moon fixed view. So I do that there. So now it's moon inertial. And you can see the loops of our vessel around Earth down there. But anyway, I add a maneuver in order to transfer. And you have to do it like this. Of course, you can't click your orbit. I tried a few times to click my orbit because, <laughs> oh, why not? Um... Maybe it'll work once. No, um, yeah, I totally forgot. And yeah, of course you have to extend your uh, plan length, otherwise you won't even see what's going on. If you extend your plan length early, it's gonna give a error because it can't calculate too many orbits ahead of time, but now it's just one orbit, so it can handle it. Uh, you can see it's sort of deflecting upward in a weird way, and that was annoying and threw me off, but that was corrected by changing the time of our burn, and you'll see me doing that there. You can see changing the time of the burn brings it down more to the moon's orbit. So that's okay, but it's a, it's a peculiar thing. Now, can we see some sort of encounter is the question? Well, the moon should perturb our orbit if we have an encounter, right? And you can see here, finally, I get it so that we seem to be taking a turn up there. It's bending our orbit, so obviously we're encountering the moon like that. So that gives me a hint that we've got it, so we can turn to moon inertial view and see how close we're getting. As we normally would when we do focus view on the map view. So there's the equivalent of focusing the view on the moon. And you can see the moon periaps is still pretty high, so we have to make some adjustments. And I also ultimately throw in a mid-course adjustment too. It's a little bit hard though. This uh, trying to get an encounter with the moon is clearly much harder. And you can see the time to periapsis is very, very quick. So we're arriving too quickly for what I really wanted. And that's one reason I did the mid-course adjustment instead, because we seem to be using too much initial thrust, and then it'll take a lot more delta-v to capture. So here we're doing the burn, but you can see the delta-v reading on the side of the nav ball isn't changing. So, great. Great. <laughs> yeah, uh, it did give the start burn time, and I believe that because of the delta-v we have and the stage time. So the start burn time seemed reasonable. But apparently Principia, which put the little thing on the nav ball, right? It created the maneuver and it put it on the nav ball. Didn't realize that we were going to take that time to do it or something. That wasn't part of the plan. Uh, so, but normally you would think that we'd be late like that. Instead, it looks like we were early. So I don't get it. I don't get why it the, the burn ended up leaving us early. That's, I mean, our resultant orbit was early. So now we have to sort of close the gap with the moon because of that. And that's a nasty radial burn. And I'll build that into the mid-course adjustment. Basically, we didn't even get into lunar SOI or barely did. So it was just about what we have left in the US to correct this. A little bit more than that. I had to use a little bit of the lunar capture stage in order to correct it. 
So here we go with the final burn of the EUS for us. Those thrusters on the EUS are pretty powerful. It's just um, a little annoying to handle them. I should have put lower thrust RCS ports actually. Okay, so finally that's the end of that stage and we used the Lunar Orbit Capture stage with the AJ-10-190. And I did replot just in case. So there we have it. I aim for about 500 kilometers just to be safe. But the time it takes to get there is still very quick. And so our orbital speed is going to be very quick when we get there. At least at the periapsis. I'm aiming for a loose capture basically because of the amount of delta V that we have left in this stage since we used extra. So yeah, uh, we are burning right now and the delta V isn't going down. That's why I was sort of hovering my cursor above that delta V reading. Uh, if somebody knows what I'm supposed to do to get the delta V reading to go down, that'd be wonderful. This burn was short enough that there wasn't much deviation. And we proceeded to periapsis. I would have gone with the exterior view instead of the map view, but we were approaching the moon from the nighttime side, so there wasn't anything to see. And here is the glorious moment where we capture around the moon. With all the... <laughs> yeah, we could have stopped there. The moon could help us with that, and we didn't have to do anything more. In fact, it might have been better off if we had done that, but it would take a while. That's like one of those missions that sort of tease the moon for a while before actually getting into orbit. I think both the Chinese rover mission and the Indian mission did that. Anyway, you can see even though we've got an apoapsis, our periapsis is crashing into the moon. And discussions with Pekka, who knows Principia more than I do, having seen other people use it, uh, said that basically we're so slow at our apoapsis that the perturbations due to the lunar mass concentrations, mass cons, are, is actually pulling our orbit down. It's enough to crash us into the moon. And that if we were in a lower orbit going faster, it'd be better, but it's still weird to me. <laughs> it's still very weird that we we have a, a fairly high periapsis and a very high apoapsis, and it's doing so much. But, yeah. It was. I mean, uh, even now, after a few orbits, we would crash into the moon. So I decided to go up to apoapsis to boost it up so it was safer, but there's no telling how long it would be safe, actually, because we can't see the plan, I mean, the, the number of steps ahead of time. So I boost up. And I think that's the future. Maybe that's the past, actually. I don't know. It's uh, because we've got a history length. It's complicated. So anyway, rendezvous in low Earth orbit, fairly straightforward. Trying to encounter something else like the moon, clearly not. So I'm going to have to practice on that. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.